What's up people, this is Danny from Plug and Play and today we're bringing you a brand new extension called Social Importer. This is a tool that allows you to import both Instagram and Twitter content directly into After Effects. So without further ado, let's get it. So here you can see the interface of Social Importer. On the right here we have four different panels and then on this main panel is where we enter in all the different criteria for what type of posts we want to be importing. At the top, we can toggle between importing via Instagram or Twitter. Below that, we can toggle between importing via an account's handle or username. And then we can also toggle between importing uh, a specific post link. On Twitter, if we toggle importing via an account's handle, we also have the option of importing the newest post from that account or the most popular post for that account. An important thing to note is that when importing via an account's handle for both Twitter and Instagram, we are limited to importing 10 posts at once. And then when importing via a link, uh, which we can do comma separated links, so we can import up to 30 links at a time for both Twitter and Instagram. And that's unfortunately based on the API limitations of both Twitter and Instagram. Below that section, we have our templates. So when we uh, first open up this plugin, there's only the default templates that we've made. But as we start saving templates down the road, those will populate inside of this. And then below that, we have our search and import button. And that just actually goes ahead and searches and imports those different posts based on the criteria that we have supplied up here. On the second panel, we have a copy and paste function. So we can go ahead and go into a specific post, make all the animations and style tweaking that we want, and then jump back out copy that, and then paste that same styling and animation to the rest of the posts. Below that, we have a uh, settings panel. And then inside of here, we can toggle the debug mode, and then also we can add presets. In this fourth and final panel, we have a little bit of information about what version you are on, and then just saying that it was created with love in Lexington, Kentucky. Let's kick things off by doing an Instagram import. So let's make sure that the Instagram icon is toggled. For this one, let's do a handle import and we'll just be using the plug and play Instagram account. So let's make sure that the handle icon is toggled. Go ahead and enter in your handle. And then inside of quantity, we can pick any number between one and 10. For this one, I'm just going to be doing seven. Below that, let's make sure that we select the, uh, the right template that we want to be importing into. Since I don't have any saved right now, I'm just going to be using the default Instagram template. Then let's go ahead and let's select the composition that we want to import into, and then let's hit the search and import button. So it's gonna go through, it's gonna find all the different posts associated to that uh, criteria. It's going to download all of the assets, and then it's going to put them inside of the uh, specific template that we defined. Now, if we jump inside of one of these posts, you can see that all of these different pictures, layers, handles, usernames, icons, they're all on different layers. And they're all controlled by this uh, control layer here. And we'll get into what we can do with this control layer down the road. In the next part of this tutorial, let's go over how to import via links. And for this, we're going to be using Twitter. So I've gone ahead and prepared some different links to different tweets that I wanna import. And we can go ahead and start copying these and then pasting them into this text box here. And then to separate these, we'll just use a comma and then a space. We'll go back to our list, grab some more, come back to our uh, interface here. And to go to the uh, front of this text, just hit the down arrow, and then we can paste this new one into here, end it with a comma and a space. And then we'll just keep going down this list and keep uh, pasting these different links into this text box. All right, now that I have all these different links pasted into this text box and I have them all separated by commas, we can go ahead and select which template that we want to import into. I'm just going to be using the default. Let's select the composition and then let's hit search and import. So now as you can see, we have all these different posts imported into After Effects. We can go ahead and scale these all down to be like 50% so we can see them. And then just like Instagram, if we jump inside of one of these comps, you can see that we have all these different assets on different layers here. So we have different layers for the uh, profile picture, for the handle, the username, the actual picture, the tweets and likes. And we can also, like Instagram, manipulate all of these through this control layer. All right, now let's take a look at this template and some of the things that we can do inside of that template. So if we jump inside one of these post comps and select this top control layer, 
and then go to the effect controls of that control layer, we can look at all the different parameters that we can mess around with. So we have things such as world movement, and this is just going to move everything in the composition. Go ahead and undo that. Um, and then inside of this top section, if you drop this down, we have these different subsections for the dots, for the profile picture, for the username, and all of these you are able to control not only the position, but also the size, the opacity, and the color of those things. Obviously, things like the profile picture, you won't be able to change the color, but you're able to change the roundness of the uh, bounding box, the uh, position, opacity, so on and so forth. Now, these other controls inside of this section are for mostly this top box here. So we can control things such as the top box height. We can control things such as the roundness of this box, the separation from the actual picture, the opacity, the color, and these things are all keyframeable. So if we want to go ahead and say uh, we wanted the top box separation to start at 50, and then maybe the size was, uh, or the height is set to zero initially, we can go ahead and keyframe these things. And now once we play it back, it animates on here. Now there's all these different parameters in here, like I said, that we can mess around with. In the picture section, there's picture roundness, the opacity of the picture, the picture size. So we want to uh, increase the size of that picture. We can go ahead and do that through here. There's also this concept of cropping. So if we wanted to have all of the uh, pictures of our posts fit into a specific size, we can set that size inside of here. So right now it's set so the uh, picture does not fill this cropped box or this cropped, uh, this cropped size but we can go ahead and click this toggle that says fill cropped image and it will now fit to whatever size that is. So we can uh, obviously scale this down and whatever way that we scale it is always going to be fitting that uh, crop size. I'll go ahead and undo this. If we go into the bottom section here, we have controls for the different icons and uh, we can go ahead and have this not be liked, we can have this not be saved. There's different parameters for the different icons in here, such as the heart, the send, comment, and then also this saved icon here. Inside the like by text, we can uh, move this around, change the opacity, change the text color. The bottom username, we're able to do the same thing, but also change the sizing. Inside of the caption, there's a toggle in here that says wrap text. Most pictures that you see on Instagram and most of those uh, captions are wrapped right, we're not displaying the full caption. But if we want to go ahead and do that, we could. All we have to do is just untoggle this wrap text, and now we see that full caption inside of here. Now there's also things such as top box height, the roundness, separation, opacity, and then bottom color. There's over 55 different parameters in here that we can play around with. But yeah, really, you're able to get in there and really personalize these to be your own. So. Um, like I said, they're keyframeable, so we can attach animation to all these different properties. So if we wanted to set all these parameters at like zero of, of scale and have them all scale on, uh, we can do that, and it's a good way to bring on these posts. I've gone ahead and I've animated a bunch of these different parameters so I could have this post come on in a pretty unique way. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different things that I animated here, and that results in the post looking like this coming on. Now, an easy way to copy the styling to all of your other posts is to go ahead and go to the second panel down here. Now, if we go ahead and select the post that we want to copy the styling from, we can go ahead and select that and then hit copy. And then let's go ahead and select the rest of the post that we want to paste that styling to. And then let's hit paste. Now, just like that, we had all of that styling from that original post pasted onto all of these other subsequent posts. So if we go ahead and solo this layer, we can see that the same animation is happening for this layer as with every other single layer in here. Let's say that I'm satisfied with the styling and animation of this post, and I want to save it as a template for later use. Let's start by saving the current project, and then let's go to File, Save As, Save As, and then let's navigate to a file directory of your choosing. 
So this can be any type of file directory in any location, but I like to set up a standard file location for where I dump all of my templates. So in that case, I'm going to go to desktop and I set up a file location in here called social importer templates. So I'm going to navigate inside of here. I'm going to be saving this as Instagram template two. Let's hit save. Now let's make sure that we're on the composition that we want to be uh, saving for later use. Let's right click on the composition's name. Let's go to reveal composition and project. And once we have that done, let's go to file, dependencies, and then reduce project. Hit OK. Let's make sure to drag this composition to the root of the project window. And then let's copy the composition's name. Now let's navigate to this settings panel inside of here and let's hit add preset. I'm going to be calling this Instagram reveal to. Now I'm going to navigate to that project file that we just uh, saved. So I'm already there and it's going to be right here, Instagram template two. Inside of comp name, let's paste in that composition name and then let's hit save preset. Also make sure that you have the right social media toggled. And in this case it is Instagram. So I will leave that toggled. Now let's hit save preset. Great. We can save this. Let's go back to our original project. I'm going to go ahead and make a new composition and we'll just call it test for now. We'll go back to the main panel here and we'll just do a simple Instagram import using the Google handle and let's just import one this time. Let's navigate to that new template that we just set up and select it. Let's select our composition and then let's hit search and import. So just like that, we have our new post importing following that same styling and animation of that template that we just saved. Social Importer is able to import directly into your own custom templates as well. And by that, I mean we can import just straight raw data from both Twitter and Instagram into After Effects. So if you want to set up your own Twitter template, these are the things that you need inside of your composition. I've labeled all the things that you need orange, and you need to have a date text layer. You need to have a number of likes text layer. You need to have a number of retweets text layer, a post pick shape layer a tweet text text layer, a username text layer, a handle text layer, and a pro pick shape layer. In addition to having all of these layers in here, you need to make sure that they are all named the exact same as I have them inside of here. So date needs to be the lowercase d, uh, number of likes needs to have the lowercase n, and then the capital L, and they all need to be named the exact same inside of here. If you wanna set up your own custom Instagram template, these are the ingredients that you need for that. So I've labeled them all again in orange. You need to have a raw caption text layer, a post pick uh, shape layer, a like by text layer, a bottom post name text layer, a post name text layer, and a pro pick shape layer. And just like with the custom Twitter templates, you need to make sure that these are all um, named the exact same as I have them inside of here. So let's go ahead and let's save these as some presets and then let's just see what they look like when we import raw data instead of After Effects. So we'll go ahead, hit add preset. We'll do custom Insta template. I've already saved this project file into that social importer folder that I was using earlier and I saved it as custom templates. So I'm just gonna select that, hit open. I'm going to go over to my project window, copy this composition name, paste it inside of here, make sure that Instagram is toggled and I'll hit save preset. Now let's add one more preset. Let's name this custom Twitter template. And we'll go to that same project file again. And this time let's copy this uh, Twitter composition name. And we'll go over to the comp name, paste that inside of there. Let's toggle Twitter this time, untoggle Instagram, hit save presets. And now we're rocking. Now we got these two custom templates set up. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. We'll just call this test. Let's go back to our social importer main panel here and let's do a Instagram import just to test these things out. So we'll do the plug and play account again. We'll just do one, but this time let's make sure that we're selecting that custom Insta template that we just set up. Let's select our composition and hit search and import. So just like before, Social Importer has gone out and fetched all of that data with that criteria that we supplied and it's imported it into this template that we set up. Now this template doesn't have any expressions associated to it, so there's no automatic resizing or anything going on. But if you do wanna set up your own custom template or you just wanna import straight raw data into After Effects, 
this is the way that you can do it. Let's do one more test. Let's do a Twitter import into that custom template that we set up. So I have a Twitter link that I'm going to paste inside of here. I'm going to go and select our custom Twitter template, select our composition, hit search and import, and boom. So just like with the Instagram post, we now have all this raw data inside of our After Effects. But just like with the custom Instagram template that we set up, there's no expressions inside of here. Um, everything's kind of just floating around. There's nothing that resizes or anything. But this is a great way to import raw data into After Effects. And it's also a great way, if you know how to use expressions, to set up your own super custom templates for your brand. Thanks for watching this introduction to Social Importer. If you have any input about the program or suggestions for what we can be doing better, let us know. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube and have a great day. Until the next one, this has been Danny with Plug and Play.